Today I'm going to review yet another Japanese film. It's the Munkata Sisters, directed by Yasujiro Ozu. It was released in 1950 and it's in black and white. It's about two sisters, Setsuko, who is played by the very famous Japanese actress Kanuyo Tanaka, and Mariko, who is played by yet another famous Japanese actress, Hideko Takamine. Setsuko is unhappily married to a man named Mimura. He recently lost his job and he is an alcoholic. An old flame of Setsuko named Hiroshi, played by Ken Uhara, reappears on the scene and Mariko tries to get her sister to leave her husband and marry Hiroshi. However, Mariko also falls in love with Hiroshi. That's the basic story of the film. It's another very simple story. Ozu wasn't too interested in plot. He was more interested in characters, their interactions with each other, more than plot. This is Ozu's first and only film produced away from Sachiku. It was produced by a company called Shintoho and it's Ozu's only film to be based on a novel. It's a very underrated Ozu film. I never heard of it until fairly recently and looking at other reviews online it got a fairly mixed response however I think it is yet another excellent Ozu film It's a little bit different to his other works. For instance, some of it is set in Tokyo, but it's also set in other places as well. For instance, Kyoto and uh, another town called Kobe. It's filmed on a different set than Ozu's other films. For instance, the bar is similar to the bars featured in Ozu's other films, but with subtle differences. It's got a different feel to Ozu's other films. It features quite a lot of very famous Japanese actors and actresses. For instance, Chisu Ryu 
is also in this film. He plays the father of the sisters. He has a smaller role this time, but he is still excellent. It's a little bit darker than Ozu's other films. It deals with similar themes, however. For instance, traditionalism versus westernization. Setsuko is a very traditional Japanese woman. She wears kimonos throughout the film and she believes in marriage even though she is very, very unhappy. Her sister Mariko is very modern. She wears western style clothes, she smokes cigarettes and she also drinks alcohol. She is not married, she is a bit of a free spirit you could say. It also deals with themes of domestic violence which doesn't feature in any other Ozu film or not one that I've seen. It's very underrated It has very mixed reviews, however I think it's one of his best films. It is beautifully shot and directed yet again. It has a lot of beautiful camera work. The sets are very interesting as always. It also features a little bit of outside location work such as a little bit of Kyoto and Kobe. It's also good to see some different Japanese actors and actresses in the Ozu film. Kanuyo Tanaka had worked with Ozu before but not often and I believe this was the only Ozu film that Hideko Takamin appeared in. There are also a number of familiar actors who have appeared in previous Ozu films. For instance the the father from I Was Born But also appears in this film. It was Nice to see him. 
in one of Ozu's later films. I think the score is also one of Ozu's best and the acting is phenomenal as always. It's funny at times but it's sad as well and a little bit dark at one or two points of the film. It is an excellent Ozu film. I'm not sure if it's a masterpiece yet. I will know for sure after a couple of rewatches. However, if you like Ozu, I highly recommend checking this film out. This is a copy. It's not officially available, unfortunately. I don't know why. Maybe because it's produced by a different company, I'm not sure. But if you can find it, I highly, highly recommend it. Great stuff. Okay, that's it for today. I'll be back soon. Take care. Bye-bye.